Um, you've seen this figure on the left before. Remember though, this is a cross section. In reality, our spinal cord goes up and down. Not, well, it actually kind of has that shape. Um, and so we're taking a cross section, but we have to have things go up and down. If we have axons, they're going like this. So you can see those columns, groups of white matter. So the columns are located in all of this area that surrounds the horn. I drew columns purple here, but here I'm just drawing in the whole area. This is all white matter. That means there's information um, traveling to and from the brain. And if we take a cross section, it's going to look like this. What are these things? So right here is the border between a horn and a column. So maybe this is right here. Here's horn and here's column. You can really imagine how these multipolar neurons here would be located here, right? And they would actually travel out this way um, and out to, in this case, this is lateral horn, so autonomic, so like a gland somewhere or smooth muscle. It's a little harder to imagine these columns um, cut this way, but I think uh, you can do it. <laughs> so this here, let me add the dendrites. This is a cell body. That's what this thing is. If I draw a similar thing over here, this is an axon that's cut at a cross section. So the axon is that middle part. What's that part surrounding it? Um, it's my, myelin. This is an axon. This little dot here is nucleus. Um, and it, the real histology does look very different, right? I could draw this one here a lot bigger. It would probably be more accurate compared to the cross section of an axon, which would be surrounded by myelin. So white matter in the spinal cord is also called columns. Um, and there's going to be specific columns or tracks for example, like, let me just grab one right here. I'll show you some of them. Actually, I do wanna show you right here. So let me actually erase some of this. Um, and I'm gonna show you the specifics. So I'm gonna show you a couple of ascending tracks or columns and descending. Ascending means going to the brain. This is gonna be sensory. Right, so a, one example of that is back here, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna draw this on one side um, of the spinal cord. This these columns would be located bilaterally. So this is our posterior column. And this is responsible one place that carries sensory information to the brain. So for example, we could have um, something out here like a, a muscle and we've got a neuron or more than one unipolar coming in our dorsal root. We would have a synapse in reality, um, an interneuron, and then maybe that information would go up, ascend to the brain. Oversimplified, we'll see some path pathways and tracks next week, but um, that's what these columns are, is they would get information from, from either the brain, in this case, from the body itself, the sensory. There are a couple other um, ascending tracks. There are two that are called spinal cere cerebellar, You don't have these specific terms in your key terms yet. You will next week. Right now, I want you to know they are groups of axons with a common origin and a common destination. So spinocerebellar, for example, 
goes to the cerebellum and is carrying a certain type of sensory information. One more ascending track. I'm just gonna draw. I'm not drawing these to scale or perfect anatomy. Um, this is, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it, it's, a, it's an anterior lateral. That's literally where it is. We've got our spino, um, spinothalamic tract here that's carrying information to the thalamus. A lot of sensory information for these tracks starts with a spino name, even though it's not starting in the spinal cord, it's, it's being processed there first. It's really periphery thalamic, but via the spinal cord. Okay, then we also need to have some descending tracks. So again, being able to visualize that these are columns of axons going this way is important. Descending, so this is from the brain. This is going to be motor information, right? It's gotta be. So for example, there is a, kind of over here, yeah, a lateral corticospinal tract. I'm gonna add this one in as well while we're here and make sure I get it somewhat right. Yeah, right along here, there's also an anterior corticospinal tract. Two different locations, anterior, corticospinal, but corticospinal means they're both taking information from the cortex and it's going down to the body and out. I'll actually show an image of this, this one in the next slide, motor information. There are a couple of other, um, I'm gonna just gonna draw a few separate ones and just tell you generally what they are. I'm not gonna give you specific names right now because sometimes you don't like it when I give you specifics. Um, four is four. There's actually five different tracks, but they're um, gonna come from four different places that are in the brainstem or the vestibular apparatus. So um, balance and then two, so out, so spinal. So how about if I give you one example? One example, I guess the vestibulo vestibulo spinal. A lot of our motor processes are actually automatic, not autonomic, because it's still skeletal muscle, they're controlling body position, but it is able to do so without our conscious um, control based on our place in the world, both our muscles, um, vestibular apparatus of your ear is balance, um, your semicircular canals relate to balance. So that's able to provide motor information directly um, that allow you to do a lot without even thinking about it. Okay, so again, the main important thing right now is that these different tracts of white matter contain bundles of axons with common origins and common destinations and common functions. 